Iconic in its colors of yellow and green, the Energy Star logo decorated the boot screen of countless computers. I somehow always associated the Energy Star logo with a monitor, for whatever reason. But I was very wrong. This little image is stored in the motherboard BIOS. Useful or not, but did you know that you can replace that very logo and personalize your retro hardware a bit further? Well, in this video I will show you how you can replace the EPA Energy Star boot logo with something else. What you see in this video will only work with award BIOSes, specifically version 4.5. It may also work with version 6, but I have not tried this myself yet. So, if you try anything from this video on your hardware, make sure you have an award BIOS. There are many motherboards with award BIOSes out there, but I would like to keep the process as generic as possible. So instead of me downloading a specific BIOS image from some website, I will create a backup of my current BIOS and extract the logo from there. I have already prepared a folder with two tools that we need for this step. CBROM is a tool for award BIOSes that is capable of modifying the binary BIOS files. It can extract parts of the BIOS or combine multiple firmwares into one file that can then be flashed to the BIOS chip. It is a bit complex to explain, but we will see how to use this tool in a bit. The other tool we will be using is UniFlash. UniFlash allows us to read from and write to the BIOS chip. To extract the Energy Star logo with a CBROM utility, we first need the BIOS image. Just select the option Write Backup BIOS Image to File and give it a name, something like BIOS.bin. Once UniFlash completed the backup, we can use CBROM to look at the content of the BIOS image. Let's have a look at the options one more time and see what we can do with this tool. I am particularly interested in the D option, which should display the composition of the BIOS file. The syntax of the command is CBROM, the BIOS file name, and then the option D. And here we see the components that make up the BIOS image. You can see the system BIOS on position 0. This is the main BIOS file which does the initialization of the board during the boot process. On position 1, you see an item called Xgroup code. All I could find for this item was that it is an extension to the main BIOS file. Position 2 holds the ACPI table, which contains useful information for the operating system. It is used to configure components and provide details on power management capabilities and plug and play configurations. And on position 3, you can see what we are after, the EPA logo. We can extract the logo with the CBROM tool. To do so, we have to use the EPA option in combination with the extract command. The full command looks like this, CBROM, BIOS.bin, EPA option, and extract. Once we execute this command, the tool asks for a file name. Now we have the BIOS image as well as the Energy Star logo in the same directory as the tools we have used so far. We are done in DOS for now and can jump into Windows to modify the logo. You may have noticed that the logo we extracted has a BMP extension. This extension is used for bitmap images and can usually be opened with Microsoft Paint. Let's try to open it. Ah, the file we have extracted is not a bitmap file but rather an EPA file. EPA is a proprietary file format associated with award BIOS firmwares. Luckily, there is a tool for Windows that can read and write those files. The program is called EPA Coder. I already installed the application in version 1.52. With older versions of this program, I had issues with the correct display of colors, so better get the version I am using in this video. By the way, you will find a link to a Vogons thread with all the tools I am using in the video description. With EPA Coder, we can now open the file we have extracted from the BIOS image. The lettering is supposed to be yellow, but is blue here. I did not have the time to find out why that is though. In the EPA info box, we can see more details about the logo. We can see the resolution, the file size, as well as the version number. There will be more information about EPA version numbers at the end of this video. Let's convert the EPA image to a BMP image by clicking the center button. 
The generated bitmap appears on the left side, which we can now save for editing. I would highly recommend following those steps, because the image file has the correct color information included. Images for award biases are limited to 16 colors. In other words, bitmaps with a color depth of 4 bits. We can now open the image in Microsoft Paint. You can go ahead and modify the image as you like, or just copy over an image you have prepared elsewhere. Just make sure you keep the resolution of the image intact. I have scaled down the logo of my channel to the appropriate resolution, which I will now copy over the Energy Star logo. Any color in your new image which is not part of the 16 color palette will be replaced with a color close to the original one. So there may be some discoloration of your image when you paste it over the Energy Star logo. Let's save the logo and go back to EPA Coder. Now we have to generate the EPA version from our new bitmap logo. Load the bitmap from the disk, make sure the correct EPA logo version is selected, in our case version 2, and press the BMP to EPA button. The EPA logo will appear on the right. It may have some discoloration, but we can ignore that. We just have to enter a file name. I will also add the EPA logo version number. We are done in Windows and have to go back to DOS now. To replace the logo in the BIOS image, we have to use the tool CBROM once more. We are going to use the EPA option again, but instead of extract, we specify the file we want to add to the BIOS image. CBROM will then replace the existing EPA logo with a new logo. The BIOS image is now prepared and ready to be flashed back to the BIOS chip. We will use Uniflash to complete this process. Just specify the BIOS image and let Uniflash do the work. And we are done. All we have to do now is to reboot and hopefully we will see the new logo appear on the boot screen. And here it is. The new logo shows up in place of the Energy Star logo. Now you know how to customize your boot screen and personalize it to your taste. If you like this video so far, please hit the like button. There is one more thing I need to share with you. Remember the EPA logo version we have seen in EPA Coder? In this video you have seen version 2. But what is the difference between version 2 and version 1? They are very similar in a sense that they are both 16 color or 4 bit images. And they have the same resolution. I have extracted the EPA logo from my ASUS P3BF BIOS, which is a version 1 EPA file. They certainly look similar, apart from the wording showing up in the correct color, but they differ in how many colors can be combined in a certain area on the bitmap. To illustrate this, I have created a second channel logo. The specification for version 1 states that we are only allowed to use two colors per cell on a grid. This is because version 1 is a character-based graphic and operates on a grid of 8 by 14 pixels per cell. We can use a graphics editor like PaintShop Pro to show a grid with those dimensions. Each of the cells you see on the screen are allowed to have only two colors per cell. In this case, black is the color of the background, and blue and gray are the colors used for the graphic. To demonstrate incompatibility with version 1, let me add a bright blue dot in the middle of this logo. If we try to load this image now into EPA Coder, we can create a version 2 EPA file without any issues. However, if we go ahead and try to create a version 1 EPA image, the program aborts with an error message. Block 41 has more than two colors. And you can see that this block has a dark blue as well as a light blue color on top of the black background. This is not allowed in version 1 of the EPA logo. And this is the difference between version 1 and version 2. When you do a BIOS modification, make sure you use the correct EPA version. I did not try what happens if I use a wrong EPA logo version, but I'll probably find out for you in a future video. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed the content and don't forget that you will find a link to all the tools in the video description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.